Cisco Secure Access, Zero Trust Access Policy. Let's go ahead and create that. Now we're going to go to resources and we're going to create a private resource or a private application. Now I've got a couple of these already pre-created. The goal here is to build an application that we can use the client-based ZTA functionality from Cisco. So this, I have a box that has SSH enabled on it and I'm going to build out this resource connector to allow access using port 22. Now zero trust connections are going to be allowed and I go ahead and put in the IP of the asset that I'm connecting to and I can build out a resource connector group. I'm not going to do that here and that's about it. Here's another example with using HTTPS. So 443, again, same system, just a different service, zero trust connection, client-based is allowed. I'm not doing browser-based, but I could. And I go ahead and, and add that to a potential resource connector group if I wanted to. Now here's another one where we're connecting to a web-based application on port 8000, and we're gonna use zero trust connections, client-based and browser-based. Now the URL is what you're gonna to use to connect to that specific application. Now we go ahead and we could decrypt the traffic and we can go ahead and cancel in my case, you would save. Now that I have these private resources configured, let's go ahead and build a policy. So we'll go to policy, access policy. And again, I've got a couple created here. Now, very quickly, you can start seeing some things that provide quick insight in the use case itself. So for example, access highlights whether it's internet or a private based application. So you can see that very quickly. And then actions and sources, destinations, obviously those are valuable attributes to build policy. But like I said, the big thing here is having a quick understanding, is it internet based traffic versus private application access? All right, so let's check out this rule. This rule here is for private application access. We give it a name, we say allowed, we'll grab a user or a group. In this case, we're gonna grab a, a user and we're gonna add all three applications to this particular policy. Now we can use the posture profile defaults that are included. Here's where you can select any specifics that you might have, both for the client and the browser. So you can see that here. And we can go ahead and add user authentication requirements. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and hit next. And now we got the configure security element. So we're gonna add intrusion prevention. This is a profile that we can create and add to this particular rule. And the other one is security profile. Now, again, we build these out under profiles, but to give you an example, it's file inspection. We might want this enabled and we might also want to add sandboxing. And so we can enable that functionality as well. Same thing with file type blocking. We can enable that. All right, we'll save that out. And we have that policy. And very quickly, we'll come back and test this. So check out the next video.